and welcome to this AI and Society section. Thank you for stopping by. My name is Adriana Labardini. I'm a Mexican lawyer specialized in ICT policy regulation and competition. I've worked for many years in civil society, then as a regulator in the Mexican regulatory agency, and in the last three years, as I've been collaborating with Rhizomatic and APC in indigenous communities, networks, and media. And today, I will have the pleasure to walk you during this 10 minutes through the notion of cognitive justice and the importance of changing the paradigms of what we deem as knowledge and why it is so important that artificial intelligence systems become inclusive, diverse, and unbiased. Cognitive justice is the notion that all forms of knowledge have the right to coexist. We all have the right to theorize and create. No one single form of knowing can claim to hold the truth. Rather, different epistemological systems may agree to join in the search of true, thus creating in a collective intelligence. The term cognitive justice was originally coined by Professor Shiv Biswanathan, a renowned Indian professor who very early in life gained awareness of the different ways of looking at the world, of learning and transmitting knowledge by listening to storytelling of different community members in India. He became very aware of the amount of knowledge that Western societies have left out, like in cemeteries of information, like museumizing knowledge. Cognitive justice, if used consistently nationally and internationally, may positively impact our democracies, our intelligence, the environment, and overall, it may impact the sustainability of a datified and biased society. A hierarchical system of knowledge is not sustainable it is partial, biased, and discriminating. Scientific knowledge, therefore, is in urgent need of other epistemologies in the search of truth, or rather in the search of local truths that are capable of providing answers and solutions to local problems and challenges where global knowledge cannot. Just like there are three types of economies, according to economics historian Ferdinand Brodel, local and subsistence economies, and national and global economies, market-based. Similarly, there are also coexisting epistemological systems. Democracies need them all to stay relevant, diverse, and inclusive. Some of those very precious knowledge systems are the ones of indigenous peoples. They are relational, empirical, and contingent, not absolute. If this indigenous knowledge is subject to contestation and modification, indigenous knowledge is not linear, is not static nor neutral. Human behavior and social factors act upon nature, and thus nature and culture are not a dichotomy. Artificial intelligence needs to acknowledge the need of such pluralism and embed it in and thus uh, start by unlearning exclusionary systems. 
that reflect in every single piece of data artificial intelligence works on. It now must go back to the world and with new lenses on, look and gather for local data provided by different sources of knowledge uh, operated by different actors. The epistemological debate is not new. We know it existed and it uh, began perhaps with the card rationalism and the rebuttal by empiricists Locke and Hume and then Kant. But now, as we move towards a datified and digitized society, we must make sure cognitive justice prevails over a monopolistic system of knowledge that cannot do the job alone with quality results. The issue is twofold. On one hand, it is crucial that national and international institutions, such as development agencies, recognize that every single notion of development has to be reviewed to include the vision of local people, of indigenous communities who see development and prosperity and well-being in a very different way than a capitalistic and consumption society. Why do, would they need to wear new lenses? Well, because they need to set more diverse local baselines to do research and for policy making. They have to uh, use different tools and methods of knowledge. AI may use decentralized diverse information as an input to its predictions so that they are unbiased and richer in knowledge. On the other hand, AI for information accessibility regarding at least indigenous territories must function on certain ethical guidelines and compliant with indigenous people's rights. Yes, these are rights that have been recognized by a number of nations of the United Nations communities. Mapping and data analysis of territorial land use of indigenous communities may not be controlled nor used by and for private interests, namely extractive industries, to the detriment of the indigenous people, because they are the true guardians of nature, biodiversity, and environmental balance. How to use ICT and AI to assure the preservation of our reserves of oxygen, biodiversity, millinery knowledge, and indigenous lives while keeping open data standards? Do the indigenous have a right to know and communicate on their own terms to protect their cultural and linguistic and natural patrimony under convention 169 of the International Labor Organization and the Universal Declaration of Indigenous Rights? How are disruptive technologies going to adapt to other epistemologies than, and not all the way around? According to a very interesting article of Maya van der Beren, in theory, at least, a design process based on cognitive justice would lead to technologies that are more flexible because they accommodate diverse interests and that are more democratic because they incorporate diverse values. In the framework of cognitive justice, people are recognized as the agents of change in their communities and societies. They are perceived as knowers and as transmitters of knowledge to younger generations, as participants in a communication process in which, di in which dialogues 
of equally valid knowledges take place. The technology, technology used to facilitate change can be democratized on the same principles. This is what cognitive justice is about. And we have to dig much deeper to see how we can code on cognitive justice principles. Thank you very much.